Are you tired of watching boring old press releases? Then you've come to the right place, the right channel, the number one channel for CEO interviews and company overviews. Welcome to Rich TV Live. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button on our videos to help with the YouTube algorithm. For more information and in-depth discussions and analysis, join our trading club at richpigsdaily.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to get alerted when our next CEO interview is released so you can discover the next 10 bagger. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, and we have Rich to be live with our very special guest, Kyle Floyd, the CEO of Box Royalty. How are you doing today, Kyle? Rich, really good. Great to be with you today. I'm super excited to learn more about your company. I've done some due diligence. We did a review, and I was really impressed with what I found. So, Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Box Royalty. Yeah, excited to bring Box Royalty Corp to your viewers. Look, Vox Royalty Corp was started. I started working on this project in 2012, 2013. I previously ran the mining investment banking division for a firm called Roth Capital. And this company was created to solve a problem for investors, which was, and what I saw firsthand, it was not in a position to do anything about, which was, it was very difficult to generate great risk adjusted returns buying small cap mining stocks. It's possible, but it's difficult. And having seen a lot of companies not do what they said they were going to do, not deliver the results that they were even capable of, um, I went about building this business to solve that problem, and that is to generate the best risk-adjusted returns in the commodity sector. And so I approached a group of investors and said, this is the mission. This is what we're going to try to accomplish. So it was really a company built for investors by investors to solve that problem, generating the best risk-adjusted returns you possibly could in the commodity sector. And so we formally incorporated in 2014. We started with $7.5 million dollars. We built the company into around a hundred million dollar business now, wow. but the exciting part is the best days are ahead of us. The tailwinds are behind us. The hard work that we've put in really over a decade in this industry and 40 years collectively with what our management team is now, we have immense potential right in front of us and we're continuing to deliver results and demonstrate that to market and validate our business. Um, so we're very, very excited about where Vox sits today, but we were created to solve that problem for investors. And we continue to solve that problem for investors. That sounds great. Now, you guys have had a very strong start to 2021. Can you go through some of the milestones that have been hit so far in the first six months of 2021 and what some of your main goals are for the last remaining months of 2021 for Vox Royalty? Sure. It's been a really exciting year for us. And I think it's a little it's helpful to go back a little bit in time and just say where we started when we Commenced, we're, we've only been public for a little over, well, almost a year and a half and we went public in May of 2020. And we had one production stage asset and, and the core of Vox is finding good value in royalties. Good value when you consider the risk, good value when you consider the return. And use our, our mining engineers and our geologists, our technical team to find great assets with great royalties. So we focus on buying royalties that are three to 24 months out of production. That's where you find the best value. It's where we're able to real, realize our expertise to bring great returns to our shareholders. And so we went public with one production stage asset. We are now at five production stage assets. And over the last quarter, we recognized record revenue from each of those productions, those production stage assets. So what's really exciting, and that's what drove the results. We came out and we, we doubled our revenue guidance from around 2 million Canadian to between four and 5 million Canadian. Um, and so that was driven by the success of picking the right assets and having that, that validated um, and those results to report to the market. Well, that's when you look at the next six months, it's a continuance of that. So we have five production stage assets now. We expect up to another three production stage assets with just what's in the portfolio now, not what we're paying for in terms of new royalty acquisitions, what's in there right now to drive production growth. What wasn't in those numbers was the Segalola gold mine that just announced first gold pour on July 30th. We expect that to hit in the fourth quarter. And we have a few other deposits that are looking like with very strong conviction, going to be in production in the next 12 to 18 months. So we believe in that period of time, we're going to go from five production stage assets to probably more like 10, if not more. And that doesn't count the acquisitions that we're going to make at great value. So we right now present, I think, a very, very good near-term opportunity for investors. But most importantly, we're focused on the long-term and we're continuing to build that value 
at very disciplined acquisition prices. Wow, that's incredible, incredible growth and opportunity for investors here at Rich TV Live to get involved in a company that's really just getting started, like you, you've explained, as a public vehicle. And you guys have so much excitement when it comes to your membership and your team. So talk to me a little bit about your team and what the key members bring to the table. Yeah, the key, Rich, is that we were, we were a purpose-built company. We were built to solve this risk-adjusted return equation in the commodity sector. Well, I think investors are really upper, unre, underrepresented in terms of their commodity exposure in their portfolios. And for the macroeconomic backdrop that we have today, I don't think there's a better time to be building that exposure. But we don't build our business around being gold bugs. We're not gold bugs. We're pragmatic about how we approach finding value in the commodity sector. And we price commodities lower than where they trade today when we're picking deals. So while we personally think that metal prices are going to be you know, outperforming, let's just leave it at that, over the foreseeable future, we're building our business to take that risk out for your investors so they can get great exposure where we actually think metal prices are going down. And if they go up, that's just, again, that there's just immense leverage to that. But we built a team to be able to find those assets that can win in an even lower price metal environment. So our chief investment officer is a mining engineer. He worked at BHP South 32, helped build their royalty portfolios. He was in charge of finding some of their lost royalties all over the world and built mineral royalties online, which is that database that we acquired, which is 8,000 proprietary royalties all over the world. His, the other co-founder of that business, Ryan Easterhusen, our executive vice president out of Australia, renowned geologist. He's helped lead some of those interesting greenfields exploration campaigns all around the world for majors. He was also the other co-founder because they worked at BHP. They saw how all these third-party royalties, which is what we buy, get lost and forgotten about all over the globe. And they created this database that we bought. And then it's also complemented by Simon Cooper, who's our EVP of corporate development. He's a mining engineer and a geologist, two in one deal on Simon. He's worked at some of those interesting mines all around the world. So we bring that expertise to the front lines of our business for our shareholders looking for great value. It was purpose built. You can't understand a mining asset at the levels that you need to if you're not if you haven't had experience working on assets, if you're not technical by trade. And so there's a lot of companies out there that have, you know, again, and I consider myself a reformed investment banker, investment bankers just doing deals for the sake of doing deals. We don't do any deal for the sake of doing a deal. We look for deals that are going to add value to our shareholders and we have the expertise to pick those opportunities. And that last quarter that we referenced, that's validating that business model. Um, and it's bringing in outsized returns for our shareholders. Yeah, I was super impressed when I was doing the review on your company a few days ago, and I saw pages and pages of assets like all over the world and literally mining everything. I was like, wow, you guys have got your hands involved in everything. So can you give our viewers an idea of how Vox Royalty selects the projects it wants to get involved with to build its portfolio and to give the best return to investors? And what is the company's overall EBITDA? So it's an exciting process to talk about, to be honest. So we have the database of 8,000 proprietary royalties. That's not a static document and it continues to grow. Incredible. What that database really does for us is we're scanning the globe day and night. We have team members all over the world. So we're kind of a company that never sleeps. We're looking for developments on projects that we think are really interesting, where we get an information from a certain source that there's drilling or there's you know something exciting going on with the project. I can, and we don't have time for it in this interview, but I go through countless examples where we get intelligence that says, this is going to be a really interesting asset. And then we go into our database and look to see if there's a royalty over it. We look to see, does it cover the resources, cover the reserves? Who is the owner? And then we work on getting in touch with these disparate sellers all over the world. And so that's, that's our process is we're looking for interesting assets that have the royalties and opposed to some of the, the royalty companies, streaming companies that currently exist, most of their business is financing mining companies. Well, they're really restricted in their opportunity set because they have to, they need a mining company to need capital to be able to get that opportunity. And by the way, typically it's a deleterious event when a mining company needs capital you want the companies that don't need capital. You want the assets that don't need capital. And so we're able to find those assets via this model of third-party royalty acquisitions. So what does all that mean in terms of driving performance to the bottom line? Look, we announced uh, earnings per share last quarter, which for a royalty of a company of our size and our stage of development, just entering the public markets, five cents per share. Look, that's going to balance out to probably around one to two cents for the year. 
Um, but that was really significant. We're driving bottom line performance. We've gone operational cash flow positive. And, and then again, that's a key milestone for investors in that we're really not, there's not cash burn now. Our assets are bringing enough revenue in um, that we're operating profitably uh, at a cash flow level. And so we've turned that corner. We're really at that inflection point. And I think you're talking to us at a really opportune time because that revenue and that income is going to continue to compound as more and more of these assets come online. And a lot of our assets just continue to outperform. Their, last year was a record quarter for essentially every production stage royalty that we had. Um, and so we're excited about what the future quarters and future years have in store for us. That sounds really exciting. If Vox Royalty were to compare itself to its competitors in the sector, and this is obviously a very competitive sector, mining is a huge, huge business. What would you say sets you guys apart? Look, I, you know, no one likes to talk about it in the mining space, um, but we'll talk about it. I think it's return on invested capital. It's return on invested capital. We've deployed about a little over $30 million in the royalties. Analysts had us doing 2 million this year. We obviously have forecasted between four and 5 million. The next year analyst consensus on us is six. The year after that's eight. So let's just take eight as an example. Eight over 32 is more than 25% return on invested capital, but it's the growth. The growth is kicking in more than that. It's growing more significant than that. Most royalty companies are investing capital at rates of return to zero to 3%. And that means if metal prices go down just one, you know, one smidge, you're now in the red on those deals. And so our ability to find great royalties at great value, at great volume, no one's grown faster than us, but I, we don't even talk about that very much. And we won't talk about it very much because that's not what matters. It only matters if you're growing with the right kind of assets at the right kind of prices. And that's what we're doing. And we're doing it in volume that's never been seen in the industry. So we will continue to bring those types of opportunities forward for shareholders and continue to grow this business accretively. Here at Rich TV Live, we love to identify undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies before they explode. We love to understand the fundamentals of a company. So let's talk about your share structure, which I, was, I really liked. How do you plan with your share structure to attract more institutional and retail investors? It's a great question, Rich, and, and we're in process on that. Again, the nice thing is your viewers aren't finding us when we went public in May, and we had a lot of work to do on our investor awareness marketing and, and understanding how to, to build really the awareness on Vox. We're starting to do a better job. We still have a lot of room to grow in that capacity. Um, but what we are, have built is, and to put this in context, when we went public in May after being private for almost seven years, we actually had to forward split the stock. So we're very, very sensitive and disciplined in terms of what we're deploying capital into and maximizing value for shareholders. And we're continuing to do that. We have no intentions of going back to the equity markets anytime soon. So we're keeping a share structure very tight. We're well-funded, cash flow positive, And we believe really the sky is the limit for our business. And I, look, that's defensible. That's just based on what we've delivered. We've led the industry in growth. So our share structure, I think, provides, you know, again, further assurances of, of what's motivating us. Management owns 15%. Insiders, in terms of founding investors, management, that's probably another 50%. Um, and then we've, we've had some of the world's who's who of great, you know, gold investors all around the world invest, like Gold 2000, Conway, um, is a big investor in us, U.S. Global, Adrian Day, Euro Pacific Gold Fund, and then a, a kind of a who's who of others um, that have also been building positions. So we're starting to attract the right kind of funds and institutional ownership as well. And all of that is in, right now we only have 39.5 million shares out. We have 5 million warrants out. We strike at 450. So, um, you know, significantly out of the money. We've really, and no debt, We've really managed to keep a very tight share structure. And that's after we forward split the stock two for one when we went public. No debt, growing revenue, EBITDA positive. You're checking every single box. And that's what we love to do here at Rich TV Live is identify those companies before anybody else on the planet. Congratulations on building a business the right way. I always say that if a company has under 50 million shares, it's bingo. That's literally what I call it. And I love the fact that you understand that and that you that you built this to be tight so that there's huge return potential for investors. 
And this is always the biggest negative with companies is they create so many shares to raise capital, but you guys are doing it the right way. So I commend you on how you're building and, and growing your company. You're doing it the right way. And because of that, I believe you guys have enormous success potential around the corner, not to mention the fact you've already been successful. So in saying that, if there was one thing that you want shareholders to know about Vox Royalty today, what would that be? Look, it's it's hard to pin it, pin it down to just one thing. But what I would tell you is we are steadfast, steadfastly focused on finding value for you around the globe. Commodity exposure is something that I think every investor should have. But it's really important to understand what kind of formats, what kind of forms you're generating that exposure through. And I believe Vox is the best risk-adjusted play in the commodity sector right now for generating the exposures that you want at very, very reasonable risk, but a lot of upside. And we purposely built this company to achieve that for you. Um, we're working tirelessly every day around the clock to find the best assets at the best prices in the best form, which is third-party royalties and delivering for that for our investors. And by the way, that's how Franco got started. That's how Royal got started. That's where they've delivered the outsized returns that have led to what is the leading $30 billion company in the space and probably the highest performer um, when you look at it over the last 20 years in Royal Gold. That's how they built their businesses. We went back to first principles, basics, built a business around distilling those values. And we're continuing to deliver that for our shareholders day after day after day. I love it. I love everything I'm hearing. Now, we've got investors literally all over the world and specifically in the three major markets, Frankfurt, the United States, and Canada, the major big three trading markets that we like to focus on and that we like to talk to investors in. So for those investors that are interested in learning more about the company, potential shareholders that have already invested, that have any questions for the company, what's the best way for them to reach you? VoxRoyalty.com, good place to start. Uh, IR at VoxRoyalty.com is a great email address if you have any questions. We're obviously on all the, the typical social media platforms as well. So happy to engage with you on any of those platforms and, uh, and always appreciative of interested investors that we can help learn more about our business um, and explain what's going on because we're really excited about it. That is so fantastic. And I'm excited too, and so is our community. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here in Rich TV Live. In saying that, I'm very impressed with Vox Royalty. Put on your watch list, put on your radar. Thank you for joining us. The CEO, Kyle Floyd of Vox Royalty Corp today. Thank you for joining us today, Kyle. Rich, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for having us on. Always a pleasure. Love to invite you back anytime you have big breaking news or you just want to talk or just talk to community members or shareholders. We'd love to invite you back. And for those of you guys who are watching, remember, if you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. This is your boy Rich from Rich to be Live. Invest in the best. The best is blessed and you deserve the best. Have a nice day, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.